welcome to Easter. Welcome to the season of Easter. This is the Reverend Dr. Idika Imeri of the Idika Imeri's Ministries. I am bringing you the Easter story. And I am bringing you an Easter message. I am bringing you a good news. Great news. Christianity is a religion of good news and a religion of life. And that is what I am bringing to you today. I am bringing you today that part of Christianity that is filled with good news. A few months ago, in Christmas, I brought you good news of great joy about the birth of the Messiah, Christ Jesus, born in Bethlehem of Judea. Today, we are going to celebrate and I'm going to tell you a story of his life, death, and resurrection. The greatest tenet of Christianity. If you do not ascribe to that tenet, you do not have life eternal. That is with God. You must ascribe to that tenet. And that tenet is, he is alive. If you do not believe that, you're done. Yours is finished. Let me begin by telling you a story. A young boy was born during Christmas. His parents were poor people. They were not rich. God always does his things. In our own perspective as humans, we will say he does his things in a way that humans would not have done so. Instead of his son coming straight from heaven and let everybody see him as he comes straight from heaven and said, here comes the Messiah. He allowed his son to come through poor peasants, ordinary people, common people, people who did not even have a home of their own, struggling people, poor people. Am I promoting poverty? By no means I hate it and I curse it in the name of Jesus. But these were the parents of Jesus. They had nothing, perhaps a donkey, and that's it. No car, no bank account, no relations to help them. There were no people, no uncles, no aunts for them to go to their home and stay. So they found somebody's uh, farm and begged the person and said, Look, my wife is about to deliver a baby. That's Joseph now talking. Please allow us a place in your house. Then the person pointed them to the backyard where they keep the animals. We didn't know whether there were animals there or not. But what we know is that it was a manger. It was a place for the animals. And there Jesus was born. I mean, that is ridiculous. But that's where we find the king. Let me tell you something. Be careful. Because the people that you do not regard as anything, you might not know. Tomorrow, you might see them as your leader. The very person at the bottom of the ladder might end up being the one who is a ruler. That's what happened in the story of Jesus. And when he was born, Herod was afraid that a king has arrived and wanted to kill him. And what happened? Magi who came all the way from the east, they came and presented him with things for him to begin his life. Don't begin anything until God has given you the things to begin. Joseph received five visitations of angels in a dream to guide him as to how to save the life of this poor little boy who is the Messiah. The Buddhist was the Buddha. The Buddha was born in affluent, affluence and wealth. 
Our king was born in, 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 in abject poverty. And let me share this with you. Let me share this with you. This parent, because they were warned by angels, now took the baby and left and stayed in Egypt. For how long? I don't know. But it must have been for, uh, it must have been for some years. And when the, the angel told them to stay there until they will be given word for them to come back. You must receive divine directives. You must receive divine directives if you are going to be successful in life. You must have divine directives. And what happened was this. That when it was time, the Almighty God sent them to come back to Israel after Herod was dead. This young boy grew up to be a man. He performed miracles. He performed signs. He performed wonders. He healed the sick. He cast out demons. He fed the poor people. He did many things. And in doing this, he stepped on the toes of those who uses God and the name of God for survival. Those who were the captains and leaders of the religion and of politics became afraid and they gave him up. And those whom he has helped all forsook him, except for the women, especially my special woman in the Bible, Mary of Magdala, the woman from, from the uh, Mary Magdalene. And we are told that he was even buried in somebody else's sepulchre, in somebody else's grave. Someone has to provide all this for Jesus. And then they buried him. They buried him. After his suffering on Good Friday, they buried him. Then, on, then, today, Easter, something spectacular happened. And what happened was this. The Bible tells us that an angel descended from heaven. And when the angel descended from heaven, the soldiers who were guarding the grave all ran away. They became like dead men. You see, angels carry the presence of God. And what happened is this, that the stone that was put over the grave rolled off on its own. When angels appeared from the throne of God, Things on earth begin to walk on their own. Things begin to move and walk of its own. That's how this goes. When the power of God comes into your situation, everything will give way, including humans, including demons. Our religion is not a religion of just celebration and drama. That's not what it is. It's a religion primarily of devotion of the love of God and of the power of God. It is a religion of making decisions, decisions of wise choices on earth and decisions of wise choices for heaven. That's what our Christianity is about. And in this story, I want to tell you that the Holy Spirit did something spectacular. Jesus went to hell and received back everything that we lost. He got back life for us. He got back our riches, our wealth and prosperity, our health. He got back eternity with God for us. And then with his death, he completely destroyed the one who ruled his earth through death and fear. And in that spirit, we entered into Easter. And he rose from the dead. The greatest confession of Christianity. There is no religion that has that. That's why I do not have no time to, to quarrel and struggle with people over Christianity. Because Christianity is out there for you to see everything. My ministry, my calling in life is to tell the story of this Messiah and to demonstrate his power. Some people just tell the story. No power. I demonstrate the power 
and tell the story. Or I tell the story and then I demonstrate the power. That is what I'm called to do. And that is why I also call you to donate to my ministry so that I can do what God has called me to do. He is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen indeed. Let us celebrate. Hallelujah. There we go. We are lighting a candle for Easter. There we go. It's coming up now. Praise God. For some people, they attach so much symbol and fear to all this. Some people will not even celebrate the birth of the Messiah. They say it's a pagan festival. Others will not celebrate Easter. They say it's a pagan festival. Show me which one do not have a pagan root. Because everything comes out of culture. Christianity also emerged from culture. That's what it's about. No matter even if Christianity, even if your Christianity is found in the village or from your own city or whatever form it takes, it's coming from a culture. And when darkness was upon the face of the earth, the Messiah rose from the dead. For me, this is just something to demonstrate something. The candle, the light, is just for demonstration, is just for teaching and for decoration. No power, nothing. Okay? If the power of God does not come upon anything, the power of the Holy Spirit, that thing is nothing. That's how it is. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There we go. I think it should be right. Like right around here. So, so I can really, really. Oh, down this way. Which way is it? Yep. I think that is good enough. But then, we cannot see the light, you know. <laughs> but I just want to show you the Easter light. The Easter candle has been lighted. Light has come into the world. Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. Nobody who follows me will continue to walk in darkness. And because Jesus Christ, the light of the world, has come into the world, has been, has been raised from the dead, by the power of the Holy Spirit, light has shined into us because he dwells in us. Hallelujah. I think I got to keep it right around here. Or just around here. Yep. There we go. There we go. Around there. Okay. Let it get out of our way. <laughs> All right. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter to you all. Happy Easter to you all in Denmark. To you, Anthony and Gemma in, in Denmark, to um, to Dorothy and Jose, uh, John in Switzerland, uh, to you, Julia, and your wonderful children in Sweden, to you, Simon in Holland, um, uh, uh, Marsha Grenada, um, Nevis in Jamaica. To many of you in Toronto whose name I cannot mention. Um, yep, the Smiths and the Vickies. And um, um, to you in Hawaii and your daughter. To those in Wisconsin. To the Garris family in Iowa. Um, to, to, to those of you in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, to Yvonne 
in New Mexico, to those of you, many, 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 many of you in New York, uh, Brooklyn, Bronx, everywhere, to many of you in New Jersey, to those of you in many parts of the world that I cannot name, to the Tulis and the Makutas in Lusaka, Zambia, to those in, the, in, the, in Atlanta, uh, Mississippi, to those in, um, in, in Florida, to those in, I mean, I cannot, the entire 50 state and Alaska and uh, Hawaii, all of you in Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon, um, New Zealand, Australia, the United Kingdom, many of you in the United Kingdom, to many of you in Italy, in Portugal, in Spain, in Belgium, to many of you in Eastern Europe, different, different places, in Asia, that I cannot even begin to mention right now. I say to you all, where you are, Happy Easter to you, Happy Easter to you, Happy Easter to you. I enjoy fellowship with you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. I have some friends here who would like to I have some friends who would like to 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 thank you and to greet you and to wish you a very happy Easter. I have some of my friends here. Uh, I have my friend here, my Easter bunny. He's right here to wish you uh, a very, uh, uh, a very, very, um, uh, let me see. Oh, is this side? Yeah. To wish you a very happy, uh, a very happy Easter, uh, Easter. Hallelujah. Let me, let me, you can look, you can look at his face. He's a, he's a pretty, beautiful, beautiful, nice, nice bunny. Come on. Mm -hmm. And I also have. Um, you can see his back too. See, this is this is how he looks at the back right there. There we go. Beautiful Easter bunny. And then I have my very, very, very good friend here too. He is a massive, big, big giant right here. It's another good. Uh, he's saying uh, happy Easter to you all. Happy Easter. Uh, he is good. And he also has some love here for you. See? <laughs> That is great. So here, all my friends, they, 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 they are all here to, to, they came to visit and to say, happy Easter to me. And here they are to say to you, happy Easter to, to you. Praise God. So it's not just me who is wishing you a very happy Easter. My friends are here to also wish you a very happy Easter. Hallelujah. And now, now let us go, let us um, listen to a wonderful music from Ethiopia. <laughs> Christ is risen. It is risen indeed. Our religion is full of celebration. The 
only religion in the world that is full of celebrations. Well, well, a religion of power and greatness and authority. That's what we come to church to do, to dance, to celebrate, to enjoy and have fun. Whoa! Our Savior is no longer in the grave. He's alive. And that is why we exude with life, with power, and authority and force. people of Ethiopia, the people of Tanzania, Uganda, Nigeria, I dedicate this service to the people of the United States, to the people of Europe, the Middle East, wherever human beings are, this service is dedicated to their enjoyment. God has called me to be a celebrate on earth. And that's why I call you to celebrate with me this day. Today is a day of great joy, not just in heaven, but right here on the earth. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you that you have called us to enter back into the life that you have always wanted us to live in. You have done such a mighty thing that separate Christianity from other religion. He is risen from the dead. The biggest sentence ever in human history. He rose. And when he rose, we rose with him. We became glorified. We begin to anticipate a life that is even greater than, than what we have now. We thank you, Lord, that our expectation can never be trampled. 
we thank you that because of his resurrection, because light has entered into darkness, any demon that leaves hell, that leaves the second heaven, any fallen angel that leaves the second heaven and come to it here, must know that the guy Mary says that you guys are trespassing. The reason is because light has come into the world. Jesus is the light of the world. He is the legal ground for who we are and what we can be and can have. Because of him, we live in truth and exercise rulership and leadership upon the earth. Father, we thank you. And we thank you because you are good to us, because your mercies endure it forever. We thank you, Lord, for this mighty work that you have given to us in Christ. In his resurrection, we are now sure of greatness that the word you've spoken in secret, in the open, will now come to pass on our behalf. For you've never lied to nobody. In this spirit, Lord, we thank you and we celebrate your son forever and ever. Amen. Now let me read to you from Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. I will encourage you to go back to the scriptures, uh, to the, to the uh, New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you will find the story of the resurrection. And then you can now follow. My job this year is not to go through those readings. My job this year is to show you the deep things about those readings in 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 the in the gospel narratives. It is to show you to amplify it in the expansion by Paul the apostle. That is what I've been doing. So that's why I'm not reading the story for you. You can go and read that up. My job is to take you straight to the power to the PowerPoint. My job here is not to make you weep and cry and uh, be, uh, we want to cry for Jesus for what he suffered. Yeah, you can feel that way. I used to feel that way, but I passed that stage. Because the Jesus we are dealing with, sometimes it's not the Jesus that people show us. I'm dealing with the Jesus who is God, the anointed one when he was on earth in the flesh. Now glorified. Let me read to you Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Paul wrote. That I may know him. And the power. Of his resurrection. Powerful. That I may know him. And the power. Of his resurrection. Two things are in this place. The title or the topic. Which is also the theme. Of this holy day. Uh, holy week. Um, uh, teachings and messages that I've been bringing to you. Says. Live. To love. Live to love. People saw you traveling abroad and they said, look at him. Look at him. He's going again. Look at him. Ha <laughs> ha. Their family never amounts to anything. One of them went abroad and came back. Nothing. Except some old useless car and built some old, ill-forgotten, God-forsaken, stupid house. So look at him. He's going again. Ha <laughs> ha. Others saw you sick and you were right to the hospital. 
Instead of them praying for you, they say, look at him again. He's going to die. Members of his family, they die like flies. Huh. All that saw you entering into marriage, they say, look at him. People in his family, they never stay in marriage. <laughs> they saw you starting a business. They say, look at him again. Oh. Look at him. When they start business, their business fell. It crumbles. Look at him. He's going again. And these words begin to eat you up. They begin to enter your life. Some of us foolishly believe it. Instead of declaring and killing those words. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Let me tell you something before I continue to go. This service is also highly dedicated to the people of the United States and Canada also. So we will be praying for this nation that I have mentioned. That I may know him. Did Paul not already know him? Did Paul not see him on the way to Damascus, heard his voice? When he said, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? And Paul said, who are you, Lord? For some of us, it takes God to break us down. Before we can live the life of wickedness and sin. Light has come into the world. The power of God is able to break every power of darkness. Let me pick up something really quick. In celebration of today, let me put on my stool. <laughs> Hallelujah. And let me continue to talk to you about this. Did Paul not see Jesus? Did he not have revelations upon revelations? He did. But here he, writing to the Philippians, said, That I may know him. Because the more you know Jesus, the more you know you don't know much about him. The more you look at Jesus, the more you see what you've not seen. The more you go to Jesus, the more you find what you've not found. The more you ask Jesus, the more you receive what you've never received before. That I may know him. There is, let me share this with you. The more you organize yourself and stay in Christ Jesus, the more he reveals to you his power another level and degree of his power that you've never known. The more you stay with him, the more he will reveal to you his riches, his prosperity, his wealth that you've never known before. The more you spend time with Jesus, the more he will turn on Gifts in a different level than you've ever experienced. And the more you spend time with Jesus, the more you receive humility, goodness, kindness, self-control, peace, power, wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, faithfulness, fear of the Lord. Just name it. In a very different degree altogether. 
That's how it is. That I may know him. Because there is more about him. That for all of eternity. We will keep discovering. And that is what makes this thing so good. And the more you discover things. That he allows you to experience. The more of authority. Force and power that you will have. You can tell everybody all the lies you want. But when you begin to stay in the presence of Jesus. When people are talking to you. You'll be hearing what you are not even hearing. You'll be seeing what you are not seeing in the physical. You will be able to enter into the supernatural realm. And be able to key in in the physical. So that nobody can, can, can lie to you. I tell you, people can cover things up pretty good. It takes the power of God to expose the manipulation, deceit, and control of human beings. And of all the forces of darkness that human beings go to look for, to come and help them on earth. And then sabotage their own happiness and the happiness of their family members forever. That I may know him. Because when you know him, you acquire power. You acquire authority. You acquire tremendous force in the heavenlies and upon the earth. When you know the power of his blood, the authority and force of his blood, it becomes a legal ground that you give to the Father to authorize him to work on your behalf. That's why when I tell you to, to release money into my life so that I can tell the gospel, I can do the business of telling the story of Jesus by demonstrating his power, you think I'm joking. When you give me, when you send money to me or to my ministry, it becomes what I use to ask God. It becomes a legal ground to authorize God to work for you. To make that miracle happen. So that no matter what. The enemy of people. Determines against you. Your money becomes a legal authorization. For miracles to happen. For whatever you want to happen. When you say to the father. I activate the blood of your son. I lay my hand on the covenant. Of the blood. And I give this agreement with you. This covenant of the blood. Father, it is a legal authorization for you to own me. For you to walk on my behalf. To deliver me. God will. You have no idea how legal Satan is. And his demonic forces. You must become legal. When it comes to the things that gives you authorization to exist on earth. And to have all that you must have. And Paul says. That I may know him. Because when you know him. You have the authority. To rule on earth. To lead. And to rule. To subdue. And to replenish. To have the blazing. The blessing that we are talking about in Genesis. Be blessed, multiply. In Genesis 1.28. Is Jesus. Jesus is that blessing. He is the one who makes it possible again. And then he says that I may know him. That I may know Jesus. And the power of his resurrection. This is getting better. And the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. What is the power of his resurrection? My brothers and my sisters. Let me tell you what it is. 
Jesus as a human being who died and was buried as a human being on Good Friday was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. I have been teaching you, if you are a follower, a partner, a friend of this ministry, I have been teaching you that if God is going to do anything mighty, the Holy Spirit is always ahead of it. The Holy Spirit is the one that comes to breathe life, energy, authority, power, life, sound, movement, light. It's always the Holy Spirit who come to lay the egg for it. Nothing will happen until the Holy Spirit show up. Jesus never entered the belly of Mary until the Holy Spirit came upon Mary. The church did not take off on the day of Pentecost until the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles and came upon where they were staying. That's how it goes. This eighth, which is the second time of reconstruction, did not come about. Read how the eighth was in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Until the Holy Spirit came and began to move upon one targeted area, which is water. And also upon the entire earth. And the water now could go on one side. Then Jesus spoke and said, let there be this, let there be that. And things began to emerge. Is it then a coincidence that Jesus, who is the light of the world, is the one who turned on the light of our, of our, of our bodies, the spirit? Is it a coincidence that the one who actually created us was Jesus. It wasn't God the Father that you read in Genesis chapter 1 that was doing the creation, that was making man and calling all these things out. It was Jesus. Go and read it in John before you think I'm a fanatic. Read John chapter 1 from verse 1 down. Through him, Jesus, all things were made. Without him was not anything made that was made. That's what the word says. The document says so. The sacred papers say so. Not it guy Mary. The one who formed man out of the dust was Jesus. God was doing all this through Jesus. And that is why it's not a coincidence that it is him that came back to redeem the earth that he has made, to reconstruct it again, and also to redeem human beings. On the cross, the same person. And you begin to take Jesus lightly. Father, forgive us, for we take your son lightly. Whereas the earth and us and everything belongs to him because he made it all. Lord, I worship your son, Jesus. I worship him. He's all that I got. I worship him. Join me and let's worship him. Lord, we worship your son, Jesus. Because he's all that we got. He is our king. He is risen from the dead. We worship him. We worship Jesus. Jesus is not just a human being. Jesus, you are our God, you are our King, you are our honor, you are our Savior. We worship you. And let me tell you what happened. The power of his resurrection means this. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. And I've just told you one of the aspects that you have to know about Jesus. That is the creator. Through him, God was, the, God was creating this earth. God made you. It was Jesus who breathed life into you. 
in Genesis chapter 1. Is it then a coincidence that him who breathed the spirit into you so that you began to kick, you became a human being, is the same one that came back to restore your spirit to God, to bring back that eternal transaction and connection between heaven and earth. The same person. A lot of work for him. And then, and then we, can, we can wag our mouth and talk all manners of things against Jesus. Fight against him. Fight for him. Do all kind of things. And that is not even for him. We have to begin to take him serious. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So why are you afraid of death? Whereas, he has conquered it for us and brought the life back into us. The very life he breathed to us in Genesis, he breathed it again to us by his resurrection. He breathed it again to us in Pentecost that is coming. The same Jesus, our God and our King, our Messiah. What is the power of his resurrection? It is the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Enter into a relationship with the Holy Spirit so that he will turn your rags into gold. You cannot continue to put on rags to live in misery. When are you going to begin to shine like gold when are you going to begin to shine? When are you going to allow Jesus to light you up? It's about time that I turn it off anyway. When? So let me share this with you. The power of his resurrection is the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that brings power. It is the Holy Spirit that brings authority. It is the Holy Spirit that brings force. That makes you sell the wind. That turns you into a ball of fire. Whereby when the enemy see you, they don't see you. They see a ball of fire and a wall of fire and a wall of iron. They see you surrounded by 15 feet angels. I want to know the power of your resurrection. What is the power of his resurrection? How was Jesus raised? The Holy Spirit. And yet that's the most neglected of all persons. We will talk everything about the drama of, of the crucifixion, the drama of his betrayal, but we don't talk about the real mystery behind everything. The power behind Jesus accepting the cross, the Holy Ghost. The power behind him spread on the cross, the Holy Spirit. The power behind the resurrection, the Holy Spirit. Let's go to the second thing. Jesus said, I have the power to lay this body down and I have the power to raise it up. There was power in him as God. So the power within him as God was also at work. That's why we have to hold tenaciously. We have to hold very strongly to Jesus because he's God and not just a man. Man is limited, but God is unlimited. And Jesus is unlimited in everything. That's why we, we can fool everybody. Because you, but you can never deceive a full God. Hallelujah. Let me light our Easter candle again, please.
Thank you for your patience. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. What was the power behind his resurrection? Outside the Holy Spirit and the power of and the power of divinity, the power of Jesus being God, the presence of God. For when an angel descended from heaven, he mediated the ability of God to stop human beings from trying to stop God. There are people who are trying to stop you from being all that you can be in life. They want to stop you through marriage. They want to stop you through, through, through witchcraft, voodoo. They want to stop you through spells. They want to stop you through the occultic powers. They want to stop you through poverty, sickness, disability. They want to stop you from being all that you can be. And God will never allow it. Because the power that raised Jesus from the dead is not going to allow it. A lot of Christians live in fear. They are afraid of their neighbors. What the neighbor is doing. Even when the neighbor has never said anything to them. They are afraid of the next door neighbor. They are afraid of a dog. They are afraid of a cat. If a cat cries in the night looking for a mate or looking hungry for food, he's a witch. Yep. <laughs> Everything become, become a demon. When are you going to become intelligent enough to know when something is of God and when something is of the devil? And when something is just natural. There are sickness that are just natural. But all sickness is devilish. Everything that is bad is of the devil. That's my belief. Every sickness is of the devil. I don't tolerate it. Whether it's natural. Whether it's caused by germs or viruses or bacteria. They are devilish. God does not deal in sickness. Every poverty is devilish. I don't like it. Whether it's man-made out of ignorance, demon connected, I don't care, I don't like it, I don't want it, I curse them. You don't get paid for being broke, you don't get paid for being poor, you don't get paid for being sick, you don't enjoy any of these things either. You don't enjoy all the quarrelings, all the divorce, all the problems in your job, do you? Do you get paid? And some of you continue to allow yourself to be pushed, to be pushed, to be pushed into it. They give you a little rope, you take a longer one. Some of you are very weak for God. While God is trying to pump power into you, you are trying to pump the power out by your lifestyle and negativity. When are you going to stop and begin to embrace the power of the resurrection? When Christ rose, he received a glorified body. When you become born again, that's the power of his resurrection enter into you. You received a new life called the Zoe kind of life. Z-O-E. The life and nature of God. When you become born again, become deposited through Christ into you. And it must flow into your soul. Begin to ask God to give you new ideas. Begin to ask God to give you supernatural intelligence. Begin to ask God to make you to supernaturally lose weight. Begin to ask God for supernatural debt cancellation. Begin to ask God to fill you again with new electricity and energy. Begin to ask God to do a new thing for you. Begin to ask God to heal you. Begin to ask God to get you out of poverty. That's what the power of the resurrection has done. 
And let me tell you the most important thing here today. The power of the resurrection entered into you now so that you can begin to enjoy life, be happy, and have enjoyment, and have fun again. Many of you people don't like you because you are not fun to be with. You don't have the gift of fun. Lift up your hand and say, Oh, Father, give me the gift of happiness. Give me joy. Give me peace. Make me happy again. Give me the gift of fun. Nobody want bitterness. Unhappiness. Unnecessary weakness. Lack of energy. Lethargy weakness. Lethargy weakness. Unnecessary sleepiness. Nobody wants it. We don't enjoy it. Nobody want poverty. Nobody wants sickness. Nobody want to constantly live under the attack of Satan. Nobody want it. Tell God that you don't want it. When Jesus rose, he was no longer limited. He can come into your house even though the door is locked. God wants us to begin to live that lifestyle. A lifestyle in which we live above this world while we are in it. If witches can travel from one from one little village in, 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 in the Caribbean or from Africa or from England or from somewhere to another place within a second. And they have such power. Why don't you think that we, we have such a power? We are actually the sons and daughters of the air. And not the witches. And not the warlocks. And not the wizards. We are. The Bible says he made his angels like winds. Like the air. They can fly in the air. Angels fly in the air. And his ministers, that is us. Flames of fire. Who mazes with flames of fire? Nobody. And yet, Satan is messing with you. And you are allowing him to mess with you. There we go. See the difference? When you live in fear, then you know that you are not living in God. You are giving Satan the opportunity to undo you, to destroy you. When you live a negative lifestyle, speak negative things, think negative things, dream negative things, you are giving the kingdom of darkness the opportunity to destroy you. When are you going to begin to talk the language of God? Speak what God says in the Bible. Talk good things. Say good things about your family, your friends, your husband, your wife. Hmm. This, is, this is getting interesting. I'm telling you. Let us enjoy a little music from Tanzania. And then we will begin to pray and begin to minister. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you. We praise you. We adore you. Let your kingdom come mightily upon us, your people. We pray for the people of Ethiopia, the people of Tanzania, Uganda, Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon, the people of Denmark, Sweden, Holland, Norway. We pray for the people of the United States and Canada, Mexico. Lord, we pray for everyone who follows you through me, who follows you through our ministry, everyone who followed Jesus, our Savior and our King, our God. Lord, we ask that you will pour the greatest thing. Reveal yourself more to us. And Lord, reveal your power to us. Lord, let the power of your resurrection mediate your presence to us, O God, in various ways and forms. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, dislodge supernatural intelligence of darkness, dislodge them in Asia, in the Caribbeans, in Africa, in Europe, in the Middle East, in the Americas and North America, dislodge them, overthrow them. Father, give to your people the wealth, the riches, new ideas, imagination, and new thoughts in this resurrection day. Lord, we ask that in Christ Jesus, you have given us the legal right to become sons and daughters of God. We give you that authorization to begin to work in our lives as it seemed good to you. That those things that we couldn't do, we can now do with them because of Jesus. We thank you. To you be all good things. We ask all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And now let me begin to minister to you. There are people who will be watching this video from Norway. The Almighty God said, I should tell you. You've been asking God to heal you of a particular sickness in your back. And there is somebody in Norway who needs God to heal you of a particular sickness in your ear. There is another person with something, a growth in the, in the neck area here. God is healing you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am seeing myself differently in this video right now. Dear Holy Spirit, go into action to heal, to deliver, and to bring people to the knowledge of Jesus. I am praying for a husband and a wife somewhere in Ireland. The Almighty God is touching you, both of you. Both of you have been asking God to heal you and to deliver your children. And it is happening right now. Hallelujah. I am praying for a truck driver. The Almighty God is touching you and healing you and your son John right now. There is somebody in Australia whose family is connected to Africa and to other places. The Almighty God is performing a miracle in your family because you need some mighty deliverance in your family. I am praying for somebody in Belfast. Your name is Magdalene. That's your name. The Almighty God is meeting you 
as you are sitting where you are. You are sitting near water today. I don't know what that means, but I know that God is healing you. You love to walk through the bushes, through the garden or something like that. And that's what I'm seeing right now. That's what I'm seeing right now. There is going to be a mighty move of God in the United States. There's a reason. The reason is because those who are supposed to be God's people in America have failed God. They have failed to hear the voice of Jesus. They have listened to politicians more than they should listen to the prophet, to the real prophets of God like myself. We have mingled human politics with and because of it, the church has joined forces with people who have closed their heart against uh, the orphans, the poor, people who came to America looking for help. And we've decided to throw them under the bus. God is unhappy about the churches in America. God is very, very unhappy with the people who call themselves Christians because we are not out there to speak out for God and to do what God really wants. Instead, we are speaking out for our political party instead of Jesus Christ. The culture of the gospel is different from the culture of any political party. Let me share what God is saying. We are using the issue of immigrant for politics instead of for mercy. Instead of helping them to integrate into life here. We are using the issue of abortion instead of really for the sake of saving lives and telling people, listen, if you get pregnant, there are social structures built into the different states to take care of you and your kid. Instead, it is for politics. God is not happy with us. He's seeing it. He is seeing it. Almost like everything we are doing, we are not doing it because it carries divine injunction and mercy and comes from a good motive. It is either to punish somebody or to envy and fight somebody. And that throws God out of it. God is not happy over how most of us who call ourselves Christians, we've united with the forces of evil to deny people the right to vote by the way we are, we are, we are a, a, a carving out district so that we are denying people the opportunity to be in position of power who are supposed to be. Let's be warned because God's anger is coming. God's anger is coming. God's anger is coming. And let me tell you, the judgment of God has started already. And that is why many prophets, so-called prophets and preachers, are going to be out of business. There is a political party in America that is going to go through a crisis. Because God says it's only through crisis that they are going to learn a lesson. I'm telling you the truth. It's coming. Mark my word. Let us pray. Dear Father, during this Easter, I am asking you to do something mighty for your people. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now I want to seize this opportunity to ask you, if you have any prayer request and you need somebody, you need supernatural divine advice, call me. I am waiting to receive your donation, your tithes, your offerings. Write to me, Idikai Mary, P.O. Box 12474, Wichita, Kansas, 67212. My email is 
Itikai Mary 2000, that is 2000 at gmail.com. Send me your checks, not fake check, and your money orders. I will lift it up to God and ask God, this is a legal ground, a legal authorization, a form of miracle of financial breakthrough or whatever it is you're asking for. Go to my go to my 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 website. Idikai Mary Ministry. Google me. It, you will find me. Idikai Mary Ministries. If you are using Yahoo or Bing or whatever, type me in Idikai Mary Ministries and go to my website and donate online. It is www.idikaimaryministries.blogspot.com. You can call me. God has asked me that whoever call me that I should respond back and pray with them. 316-765-0060. That's my phone number. And I'll be here to pray with you and pray for you. And God will deliver you. God bless you on this Easter day. And I want to wish you a very, very happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is the light of the world. Hallelujah. And my friends here saying goodbye. Goodbye and happy Easter to you all. Yeah, happy Easter to you all. Yep, 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 yep. Happy Easter, happy Easter. From my little Easter body. This happy Easter to you. And uh, my big teddy bear. I need that to be also. I should be the kiss. I should be the kiss. Praise God.